Well, good morning. Isn't it good to get together with the rest of the family and be able to enjoy one another? Yes. Amen. Um, I want to start my message off this morning with a personal story. Um, a few weeks ago, um, as most of you know, we have a food pantry here, and uh, generally about once a month or so, I go up to Gangsville to a major distribution point and buy food to give to people in time of need. Some of you have been uh, received it before, and, uh, and uh, so it's a real blessing, and uh, we get the food real cheaply compared to what you would spend. And for those who don't know, we have a food pantry. We have a food pantry here. If you ever need, all you have to do is uh, talk to Sherry or talk to myself, and we'll uh, get, accommodate you. Uh, feel free. I know for people who are used to being givers, it's hard to receive. I want to say that again. I, I know it's hard to comprehend, but they're generally the last ones to humble themselves and say, I have need. And we'll all go through that at some season. Uh, when I was going through my tough time, I wasn't aware that there was anything like that around. And we ate tomato soup without crackers. And because uh, that's all we could afford. But anyway, I, I went to the food bank a few weeks ago. And um, um, we um, had run out of Hamburg. And so... Hamburger is a great economy for us because I like all kinds of meat. And you can do more with hamburger because when you cook a chicken, what do you get? Chicken. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Uh, when you end up a chicken, that's what you get. And uh, thank God. What's that? Um, how, however... You can, you can take beef and make it a thousand ways. So thank God for Hamburg anyway. And uh, they hadn't been, for whatever reason, there hadn't been Hamburg in the boxes as, as a rule. And I still get several boxes and then several boxes of meat to different people. And um, this time when I went, I, 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 when we got the meat, I noticed there was a whole box of hamburger. And um, so I... I decided I really need it. We've been out of it and so on. And even like today, we're going to meet with a few people here just because I would like to have more time with some people. I don't get to meet with all of you in a personal way. And uh, we always supply the meat for anything we do here with the church. And uh, so I chose to keep that box for myself. But then God began to speak to me. And he simply said, why don't you share part of the Hamburg, there are others that would like it too. Um, and it's not that I can't afford to buy meat at the uh, meat market, we do that. Um, but for whatever reason, I was really struggling with that. And um, I know you can't imagine me struggling. Um, I think I didn't talk about bacon. Uh, bacon. <laughs> we aren't, aren't going to go meddle on my bacon. Don't touch the bacon. <laughs> Um, so, so anyway, God began to really deal with me, and I finally gave it, and I said, okay, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, give some of this to some of the other people. And um, so I did that. But as I was thinking about what's behind it all, um, I realized there's... It wasn't that I couldn't buy Hamburg. It'd be one thing if they quit making Hamburg. That would be a real shame, wouldn't it? Of course, as long as they keep baking, we're okay. Um, but um, it wasn't that I couldn't buy it. I had money to buy the Hamburg. I um, had a place to store it, and so on and so forth. And God began to speak to me, uh, and he said, Roy, I want you to take a look at Jesus first. And uh, it's a principle in the Word of God, and I would like to talk about this more. And I know there's a tendency, anytime we talk about giving, some people just wrestle with that. 
Okay? I, I just want you to know, I don't know who gives and who doesn't give here. I, I let the people that take care of the finances deal with that. I don't know how much you give or how little you give. Uh, that's between you and God. And, um, and so I treat you all on an even plane as far as that goes. Because you know what? We can become corrupt in our purposes and motives too. Uh, and I know some people think you never do. Just like me struggling with that uh, surprised me uh, myself. But you never know what's going on in your heart to the full. Uh, but um, I want to take a look a little bit at the first. Um, let's turn to Exodus chapter 13 and find a basic foundation for the first. Exodus chapter 13. Verses 12 and 13. And it says, And you shall set apart unto the Lord all that opens the womb, and every firstling that comes of the beast shall be the Lord's. And every firstling of the, don verse 13, every firstling of the donkey, every firstling of the lamb, you'll... Uh, it says, if you don't redeem it, then you'll break its neck. And all the firstborn of man amongst the children you shall give. So here's what God does at this point. He says, he establishes a principle of God first. And if you, uh, to me, there's a bigger story behind it. And we know that the children of Israel have been in bondage to Egypt for 400 years, figuratively. Um, and then God brought Moses, and he came, and they, they had the 10, ten uh, curses that hit the land. And the last curse was that they were, uh, God was going to kill the firstborn of every animal and every person, except those who put the blood up on the doorpost. And so the children of Israel, they slew a lamb. God told them to take and slay a lamb. And by the way, a perfect spotless lamb. And then take the blood and sprinkle it up on the doorpost. And that night when the death angel came through, anybody that was in that household, animal or person, there would be no death of the firstborn. And, of course, those of Egypt thought that was them backwards uh, people and their religious traditions. And so most of them didn't. I believe there were some that began to realize that God Jehovah was a real God. And so the next morning they wake up. And in those houses where there was not the blood on the doorpost, the firstborn of every person and the firstborn of all the animals had died. Yes. Can you imagine how devastating that had to be? Now, with the children of Israel, theirs didn't die because they redeemed it with the blood. So they bought that the firstborn life with the blood and applied the blood so that the death angel didn't touch them. At this point is when God began to claim the first animal, the firstborn, and the firstborn people as his own. Now, when you had a child, you didn't have to sacrifice it. You redeemed it. And so you took and you bought that thing back, okay? And it's a sample of what Jesus did for you and I. He redeemed us. He bought us. He said, you are bought with a price. What was the price? The blood of Jesus. Okay? And so we find uh, uh, God first in, in this principle, and it follows on through. Uh, the Bible is God first. Um, let's turn to Exodus chapter 
13, whoops, let me see. No, Exodus 23. Exodus chapter 23, verse 19. And it says this. Nope, that's, I got the wrong verse. I wrote it down wrong. Um, basically, it was the first fruit of the harvest. Is that it? Oh, oh I did it? Must be, I'm in 13, 19. Okay. You want to read it? Okay, so he says this. He says, when you go to harvest, what you do, do. The first fruit, that means the first fruit that you cut, I want you to bring that to the Lord and give that unto the Lord. And so it was um, on the day of harvest, lots of people took the first fruit, took it in and gave it to the priest and they gave it out to widows and all the other stuff. So we find, he says, I want the first of anything that opens up the womb. Now he says, I want the first of the fruit and vegetables and all that. Okay? Let's look at one more, and let's look at Leviticus chapter 27. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. Oops. Is that it? You want to read it? Oh, I know why I'm in Numbers. Leviticus 27, verse 30. Here we go. It says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of seed of the land or the fruit of the land, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. So, he's simply saying, basically, what is he saying? In everything, you are to bring a tithe unto the Lord because it is His. Okay? And it's interesting. It said, if you didn't redeem the animal, you had to break its neck because if you kept it, what happened? You are stealing from the Lord. Right? Because it's his. Um, and I know there's some people that can sit back and say, man, why do you make it so hard? <laughs> By the way, I didn't make it anything. Okay? First of all, God is the one that established yes. it. Okay? Okay? For our good. And before it's said and done, I trust you will understand why God says, I want the first. First of all, it's because it's his. It's not yours. It's not mine. The first is all his. Can we take, turn to Matthew 6? Matthew chapter 6. Are you just pawing the ground to read, buddy? How about... How about you reading verse 20, let me see, 24. Okay, it says, yeah, good job. Bet, better reader than I am, huh? Was that why you wanted to read because I was butchering it so bad? You know, you're a real friend, aren't you? Awesome. Good job. Good job. What does the verse say? It says, 
We cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve God and mammon. Now, mammon is money and things, earthly things. Okay? Mammon is that. By the way, there is a spirit that drives that spirit of mammon. And that's what I was struggling with that day. That spirit of mammon was trying to drive me, and, and, and generally it shows up as greed. Yes. By the way, if you have a problem with the spirit of mammon and greed, there will never, ever be enough. Right. And in my case, with, with the hamburger, if I took the whole case, what am I saying? God can't and won't provide more for me. And without even paying attention to it, the Spirit was trying to overtake me. And you realize that that Spirit of Mammon wants to overtake every one of us. Yes. And cause us to operate in fear, and cause us to operate in selfishness and greed. It wants to get every one of us. And all we have to do is let our guard down and even this morning, as I remind you, you, you might begin to realize, ooh, boy, that spirit's touching me. Okay? But why, do, why, do we make it, why does God make it so hard? Have you ever heard people say that? Let me tell you why. He wants you to serve him. Yes. And before I'm done, you'll understand why he wants you to serve him. And God says, listen... When you take that which is mine, now you operate under a curse. There you go. Okay. Um, let's look at Matthew six twenty one. Did I did I read that one? No, I didn't read six twenty one. Um, the body, I mean, the light of the body is the eye, and if the eye is, whoops, is that the wrong one? That's 22. Oh, 21, thank you. Someone want to read it? Oh, that's where it is. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Here's what God's saying to you and I. Listen, if I am your treasure... And you, it says, lay up treasure in heaven. And I believe when we give, we're laying up treasure in heaven. Yes, yes. He says, where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. Let me tell you something. Yes, God required of you so that you will be invested in heaven and have eternal life. It's so easy to get our eye off him. But I tell you, I can tell you where your heart is if you show me your checkbook or your charge card. Hopefully not your charge card. Uh, <laughs> hopefully not your charge card. I actually, actually, I do use my charge card all the time. I pay it up at the end of every month. Um, so, but God is saying, I want your mind to be on me. Amen. And so every week when you go to tithe, he's saying, you're setting your heart and your mind on me. Listen, if you refuse to set your heart on, and mind on him, you only have one other choice. What is it? Yes. The spirit of mammon. The spirit of this world and the spirit of mammon. So God isn't trying to make it hard. He's saying, I want you to regularly... Set your heart on me and eternal things. Because if you don't, it's so easy for us to go astray, isn't it? I don't know about you, but it's easy for me to go astray. Uh, I have my wife and, and Bernice and Abigail and Sherry and James and Mike. And I have all kinds of people that try to keep me straight. Uh, uh, by the way, we need that accountability, don't we? So God is really trying to get us to focus on him regularly. And I'll tell you, if, if when you tithe, God is getting right to the heart of who you are. 
How many of you struggled with tithing? I, I don't know about you, but uh, I, let me tell a little bit of my story with tithing. And uh, when it, uh, you, after I came back to my wife, after we'd been separated for six months, I had made Jesus Christ Lord. So uh, if we make Christ Lord of our life, we will tithe. Yes. Okay? Yeah. And if you don't tithe, it's, you're trying to take away his place and take his stuff. Now, some people do it in ignorance. Some people do it out of fear and all that. Okay? And, and, but God is not after your money. God is after your heart. He wants your love. He wants you to be blessed. And so he says, you're either going to serve mammon or you're going to serve me. Which one are you going to serve? And he's saying, I'm after your heart. And where your money goes is where your heart really is. Okay? And, okay, I started telling my story. And we, we've been apart for six weeks. I'm sorry if I'm a little distracted. My head's bothering me some. Pardon? Uh, we've been separated for six months. I came back. And I said, we need to tithe. So we started tithing. And um, we didn't have enough to pay our tithes. So I started an IOU. You know? And uh, before I knew it, it had been probably five, six months. I had an IOU of $300, $400, something like that. And, uh, but I was doing the best I could with what I did. Uh, you know, with what I had, I said, I'm doing the best I can. Of course, I didn't understand what tithe means. What does tithe mean? First fruits. So when we came down here, um, I, said, I said, honey, we're starting our brand new start. And what we're going to start doing is we're going to start tithing first. Yeah. Now, up there, I was making $10 an hour. I came down here, and I started at $5 an hour. And so I had the bills based on $10 an hour. And so if we didn't have a miracle every week, we would not be able to pay our bills. Wow. We literally had to have a miracle. But I started off saying, we are going to tithe. I don't care what happens. Amen. I am going to give to God first. Now, up before that, I wasn't tithing because if it's not first, it's not then it's not a tithe. You are giving. You can give 10%, but the tithe is always first. Okay? And it takes an act of faith to believe that God will take care of you to tithe. And, and so we did that. And amazing. Boy, I wish I had written a journal. Every week, we were able to pay our bills. Every single week week I don't I can't even remember how we ever made it um, I mean I do remember that we used to go to McDonald's once a month and ate out and and that was the only time we ever ate out so we lived a very uh, thrifty lifestyle um, and uh, but we started tithing and giving God that which was his first can we turn to Malachi this morning? I want you to understand the heart of the whole issue with our money. Malachi 3, 7. For from the days of your father you have gone away from my ordinance and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. You say, wherein have we robbed you? In the tithe and offerings. And here's what he says, listen. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me and this whole nation. I want to talk about what is a blessing and what is a curse. A blessing is having God's supernatural power working on your behalf. And the interesting thing is, when you tithe, what happens? The blessings of God come upon the 90%. Yes. So his supernatural power begins to work on your behalf 
with the 90%, and it will do far more than what 100% would have done. Because the others is cursed. Now let me talk about what is a curse. The curse is a supernatural power against you. Basically, it's saying this. All right, buddy, come on. Instead of having God on the other side, all right, guys, let's go get them. And the word of God says, when we rob what is his, it brings a curse on us. In other words, even God opposes us. Any of you ever felt that way? And, and so God is simply saying, look here. When you rob what is mine and don't put me first, now you're going to struggle all the time yep. because I am against you. The last thing I want is God against me, especially with this supernatural power. By the way, why is God doing that? Listen, he loves you too much to let you walk in the spirit of mammon and death and destruction. And so he says, okay, I'm going to oppose you. Have anybody felt they were opposed? They were opposed? I think of Balaam. <laughs> I think of Balaam. Uh, you know, if you know the story of Balaam, what he did was he, he, God told him not to go with these people and cursed the children of Israel. And, and so finally, because they came back again, he finally said, okay, I'll go with you. So he gets and gets his donkey ready, and what does he do? He starts riding his donkey, and all of a sudden, the donkey stops and, and, and drops to the ground, and he gets up and he beats that donkey, and the donkey gets up, he gets back on it, goes, and then before you know it, they think there's three things that happened. One time he rested against, rubbed him against the wall, and the next thing I think he fell totally down. And, and here, if your donkey ever starts talking to you, you need to realize there's something strange going on. Okay? Just that if, if, I know there's people that say their dogs talk to them. We aren't going to talk about that today. Okay? Um, okay? But, but listen, Balaam couldn't see that God was opposing him. And listen, when you're robbing from God, God loves you so much, he says, I can't let you live under that spirit of the world because it will destroy you and take you away from me. And I long to have a relationship with you and I long to bless the other 90% far more than if you had 100%. Now we have to be people of faith to tithe. Because... And te technically, we don't. Let, 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 can I correct that? Listen, I, I don't understand people saying I have to have faith to tithe. I said such a stupid thing, and I realized it. No. What would, if I make $100, and God only asked me to give 10 does it take much faith? Why not? I have $10 to give him. What would take a bunch of faith is for you to tithe first. Then you can say, well, I don't have any. Listen, if you don't have an increase, you don't owe him a tithe. He only asked for the tithe of your increase. And so if you've gotten, then you do have to give. The thing is, you really don't trust God to take care of you if you do. Now, the amazing thing is when I moved from New York down here that I made less money and yet I could still pay the bills. What happened? There's only one explanation is that God began to bless what I had because I had ceased to rob him and was putting him first. Yes. Amen? Yes. yes. So, so it, doesn't, it shouldn't take a whole lot of faith because he's already blessed you. The ch question is, are you going to give him what's his? Mm -hmm. 
Now, I know a lot of people don't like it, but the scripture says it very clearly. When you don't, you are a thief. I find it interesting with Robert Morris, one of the things he did, his daughter started dating this guy. And everybody really started to give him a hard time because Robert Morris is really very firm about the tithing. And uh, they were giving him a hard time. I'll bet you your dad checked him out. And she comes in and she said, Dad, did you check him out? He said, I sure did. He said, I don't want my daughter marrying some thief. By the way, because then they would be walking under the curse. Yes, yes. Not just him, but yeah. her too. That's right. And so it is a test. It's really not a test of faith to me because you have the money to give or else you don't owe anything. You see, with me, with the Hamburg, by the way, I buy the food that we get from the food pantry. I buy, it, I buy it personally, okay? I pay for it personally. That's what God spoke to me to do. So I buy, I have people that support me from outside this place. And, and I take that money and buy the food. Okay? So did I owe a tithe off the food? No, I didn't owe a tithe off that hamburger. But God something, saw something else gripping my heart. And he said, Roy, this isn't good. That you aren't willing to share or don't even want to share with others. And in his love, he corrected me and got my attention because he doesn't want me following after the spirit of mammon. Okay? Does not want me moving after the spirit of man. By the way, I'm not talking to you guys about this this morning because we're struggling financially. I just want you to know, thank God, the church is doing extremely well. In the middle, in the middle of the whole pandemic, we have done very well, okay? Right, Angel? She takes care of the money. Right, Angel? Yeah, it's even better. Okay. Even better. <laughs> okay, even better. Well, no, it's, it's, a, it's a reality. We have done far better during this whole thing than we were before. Okay, so I'm not talking to you. Listen, I want to talk to you about the. F yes, yes. I mean, yeah. So, but but listen to me. I'm talking to you about God being first in your life. Tithe is only one area that we would do that. God wants to be first in your life, in every aspect of your life. Because, he says, I want you to be blessed. Yes. How many of you think God really wants you to be blessed? Yes. He does. Okay? God wants you to be blessed. Let me see where I'm at. What I have and haven't covered. Um, let's turn to Matthew chapter 6 again. Somebody read verses 20 and 21. No, we already, no, we didn't read that. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we read the second part of it. Yeah. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth and rust will corrupt, neither thieves, thieves don't break in and steal. For where the, your treasure is, there is your heart also. I want to turn now to Proverbs chapter 11. <clears throat> We want to look at verse 24 and 25, okay? For there is that that scattereth and yet increases. There is that that withholds more than is necessary and it brings to poverty. By the way, that is exactly what God was dealing with me on with the hamburger. I didn't owe a tithe or anything on it, but he said, look at there's a spirit rising up in you of fear and greed, and that will destroy you. He says, I want you to scatter. What does he says happens to those who scatter, who are free to give to others? Hmm? What does he want us to do? 
He says, listen, he says, listen, that you will not struggle with poverty, but that you will have increase. The liberal soul shall be made fat. He that waters himself shall be watered. Um, so it's really important that you and I listen to the Holy Spirit, not just simply tithing, um, but in every area of our life. I, I want to I finish with another one that God talks about. And um, when he asked for a lamb to be sacrificed, he said, I want a lamb without blemish. In other words, I want your first and I want your best. I know you never struggle with it. How many of you have ever seen the, the story of the man called Norman? If you haven't seen it, we need to have a movie night and watch it. Amazing, amazing, amazing movie. But there was this backward sort of guy, kind of like me, living next door to, Nor uh, to Mike Atkins. And Mike uh, saw this guy one day, and uh, he was dirty and unclean, and the house was a mess and, and all this stuff. And Mike came to know this guy as God began to deal with him to love uh, Norman. And finally, one day, God says, I want you to buy, buy Norman a suit and take him to church. So, I mean, give him a suit. So he went in his closet, dug all the way in the back, got one of his old suits out and pulled it out. And as he looked at it, the Holy Spirit says, you wouldn't even wear that. <laughs> Buy him a new one. You see, once again, there is a spirit of poverty that wants to overtake all of us. And it's really important when we obey God, when he speaks to us, even, by the way, the tithe and offering. I haven't talked about offerings. I, I've only been talking about tithes. No, let me tell you what's going to happen to you. When you start tithing, God is going to bless you. Amen. Okay? And you will find the joy of giving. You'll find it is more blessed to give than receive. Okay? And you will begin, or God will begin to speak to you to give offerings. By the way, the offerings don't necessarily come to the church. Be exact for me, um, one of the things that I encourage people to do is take, but it says tithing and offering. So if you're going to start tithing, can I recommend something to you? Start giving offerings too. And so I recommend people say, take and put $5 in, the, in your pocket in a special place where you don't touch it and to give when God moves on you to give. And if you'll step out in faith, I have a story on I remember telling somebody that one time and they were shocked when God responded and showed them who to give the money to. And, uh, but when you step out in that area of faith, God will begin to use you in ways you never yes. dreamt possible. Yes. And what's going to happen is the whole financial thing is going to get turned around. Amen. And you will have more than enough. And you will find the joy of giving. Um, I don't know if you know it, but the people that started the caterpillar, caterpillar uh, what's it called? Um, the you know, Ring power, or caterpillar, no, the caterpillar industry. That guy was a Christian, and his goal was, he said, I want to be able to give 90% and live on 10%. Yes. Do you realize demand from J.C. Penney's? His goal was to live on, uh, give 90 and live on 10. Uh, Swiss, the, went, the cheese one, which one's that? Um, Kraft, Kraft cheese started out with a Christian who wanted to give 90 and live on 10. My dad, in his life, his goal was to give at least 60%. 
And for many years, he gave 60% of what came in to build the kingdom of God. He believed in laying up treasures in heaven where moth and rust don't corrupt and thieves don't break in and steal. Even in his inheritance, my dad wrote his inheritance to say, I want 60% given to ministries and 40% given to all the kids. By the way, I come from a family of 11. Okay, so. But, but let, let me say this to you. My dad was a wealthy man, but you would have never known it. I didn't know how wealthy until we did his will. I just want to encourage you this morning. Make God first in your life. Money is just a test to see how we will do. Okay? Um, and I just thank God for how he dealt with me when I, that spirit was trying to take a hold of me. And he'll do that for you, by the way. You know, you know this God will straighten you out if you'll let him? You know, I could have pressed on and insisted on my way. You know, go on and insist on my way. But he loved me too much to let me go there. We never want that spirit to get a hold of us because there will never be enough. Rockefeller said, somebody said, how much is enough? He said, a little more. One of the most wealthy men that lived during that whole period. Um, anybody have anything they want to say about giving or tithing or uh, putting God first? Yes. Yes. But, but you know what? God knew your heart. You know, you know God, God knows us. Listen, God knows you and I. He loves, listen, he loves you. He loves you when you are not tithing. Okay, listen to me. Hear, hear what I'm saying. God doesn't want you to tithe so he will have more. By the way, if you don't know it, God owns it all. Okay? Why does he want us to tithe? He said, I want to break the curse in your life. And I want to pour out a blessing. And because he established that in the heavenlies, that's the way it works. And you can, you can wrestle against it all day long. It's, it's, there is a spiritual principle, and you're wrestling against, just like Balaam, he was wrestling against God. What was God trying to do? Don't go. Don't go. Can anybody tell me what happened to Balaam? Nobody know what happened to Balaam? Let me tell you why. Because it's about 10 chapters later. So I give you an assignment to look that up. Are there anybody else? Is there anybody know what happened to Bill? What happened? And, and. Yes, he died. Well, I got it. He was. Good job, Well, and I. That's why I hang out with Will, and that's why I'm. Okay. No, he was murdered. That's right. That's yeah. Do you know what Balaam's advice was to the children of Israel? He couldn't curse them. But here's what he said. He said, take your young women and send them into the camp of Israel. And when they get sexually involved with them, it will devour them. And God will slay them. 
But God was trying to oppose him, to stop him. Listen, we don't want to operate just on principle. Listen, yes, we need to understand principles. We don't ever want to stop there because it's about a relationship with God. Okay? And he will have you do some crazy things. I mean, I, I have done some really crazy stuff in my life. And, and, and you know what proved? You know what God proved? It was him, not my stupid thoughts, because he backed it up. And, and anybody else have a question or a statement? A slow decline. And we were under a curse. Yeah. And the rest of my family still operates like that. But when I started paying attention to what this man was teaching mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. on, on, on God's economy, mm -hmm. I've got so much stuff I've got mm -hmm. to give it There you go. Might, might I say, God is going to take you through seasons, you know, that he's going to test your heart. Okay? He generally doesn't do it, doesn't do it at the beginning. Generally, when everything starts flowing good and easy, he reveals our heart just like he did me that day with the hamburger. Okay? He, he will reveal our heart. So listen, God will begin to speak to you. For me, all that I have is God's. You know, the complicating thing with me in the church, I use my yard tools to take care of the church's lawn when I do it, and I use my power tools and hand tools to do work around the church. Listen, it's all God's. Right. And when we get to that point where we realize it's all God's, I'm just going to follow the Holy Spirit as he speaks to me, will we still tithe? Yes, yes we will still tithe. But we will go way above and beyond that. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have anything they want to say? Yes, Ron. I got a nice little story. Uh, my wife and I, we've been giving over and above our tithe. And we've been blessed at times. And then I started giving uh, an offering, which we've been doing for quite a while. And many times. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Here you go. Here you go. And many times uh, at the end of the month, we are short because I, I go over all the figures and I tell her, I said, we're not going to be able to make it this month, all our bills. We're going to be short. We're going to have to borrow the money. And the end of the month comes and we have a, an overage. Praise mm -hmm. <laughs> God. I don't know how it happens, <laughs> but it happens. Yes. Sometimes people give us money. Uh, something just happens. Yes. You know? Yes. And the money is always there. Yes. And uh, we've gone through this many, many times. Mm -hmm. And um, lately, in the past few weeks, God has been talking to me about giving someplace else in offerings in the church, and which I'm going to do because lately... <laughs> We've been talking about tithing and offering here, the, the sermons we've been having, and this is all confirmation that I'm getting from God that mm -hmm. I should be giving more. Yes. And we're not getting, you know, we, we're on Social Security, and uh, plus we're, what she makes here at the church, but the Social Security, you know, it's funny, the government gives you an increase, but then they turn around and take some of it away. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, huh? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, government, you know. Yeah. But, you know, the increase you get is never enough. You, you just wish that it was at least more than twice as much so you could make your payments at the end of the month. But, you know, there seems to be an overage now a little yeah. each month because yeah. I've been giving it uh, yes. an offering. Cool. Awesome. God yeah. is just amazing, you know. Yeah. I sit there and I just watch him work. Right. 
So I get to the end of the month and I say to myself, well, I don't know. How we, might, we might not be able to. And then the money's there. Still there. Amen. Just amazing. My wife keeps saying, oh, you added it wrong. <laughs> well, I do it with the calculator that's in the computer. So it's not, not <laughs> then the computer must be wrong then. <laughs> yes. I, 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 I want to close with one last story. I could talk a lot about it because God has dealt with me in it. Um, when I went to Bible school, um, I had been a contractor, and we sold our house and all that. Didn't end up with a whole lot of money left when it was all said and done. And I went to Bible school. Uh, I was going to work four hours a, a day and go to Bible school the other hours. And uh, we did that. And I went from having a, I made really good money as a contractor. I did very well. And uh, so we went from making quite a lot of money to making four hours at probably, I don't remember why I got paid, $15 an hour or something like that. Um, but here's what God spoke to me. He said, I want you to start paying a double tithe. Now that is the stupidest time in the world to pay a double tithe when you have less money. But we did. I, I, I've, I've, I, know, I know God's voice and my wife and I agreed and we paid a double tithe. And uh, our needs were met all the time we went to Bible school and then above and beyond. But um, we had a lot of fun with the double tithe because the tithe goes to the church, okay? The other tithe, I could do anything I wanted to with it. And we had so much fun blessing people. I mean, it wasn't it fun? I mean, we just loved being able to bless people. And God said, here's some money to bless people with. And he met our needs all during it. So it's really important we learn to hear God's voice and know it. Now, occasionally, are you going to miss it? Yes, you will. And when you do, you'll know it, and you'll say, whoops, that wasn't God, because if he doesn't back it up, it's not him. Okay? And if you miss it, what are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to say, all right. No, we're going to be honest and say forward. That wasn't God. That was me. All right, God. Here I am. Right? Listen, the enemy wants you to believe that God will drop you. God will not drop you. God loves Listen, if you start tithing, trying to get God's love, don't waste your money because he already loves you right now. He loved you and I while we were yet sinners. He paid the price for us when we were yet sinners. We can't buy God's love. Okay, well, Here's what he's teaching us. Listen, he's teaching us stewardship. Okay, And if we won't take care of the natural things, he can't bless us with the spiritual. When we are faithful with the natural things, he will bless us with the spiritual things. Okay? And so it's all preparation to be a good steward, even with the spiritual things. Amen. Somebody had, and, and did you have something else? So actually this last couple of weeks, um, uh, we, we tithe, and I don't really struggle with tithing. Um, but for whatever the reason, every year we get a tax return, I really struggle with tithing. Mm -hmm. um, and we get more than what we pay in because we have six children. So it is what it, that's not why we have the six children, by the way. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, so I was just, I was really struggling with it. And, and uh, I was like, well, I don't have peace about doing it. So I'm not going to do it until I have peace about doing it. And then um, it was actually just yesterday morning. I woke up and I, I was still struggling with it. And I said, God, I need you to deal with something inside of me then. Um, and so then I just kind of went on with my day, you know, listening for God, whatever. And uh, and, and I, I know the struggle behind it is a poverty mentality. It's not because I want to go buy a bunch of fancy things or anything like that. It's because I want to put it in my savings account and hoard it <laughs> um, mm -hmm. for just in case. <laughs> Um, just in case God doesn't come. Right, just in case, you know, God forgets to I bet show you up. he feels good about that, that you're covering him in case he right. doesn't. So I'm helping him out. <laughs> so anyway, so um, so I just kind of sat on it, and, and I prayed about it. It came to me again yesterday really strongly, and I was finally, I was like, okay, um, I, can't, I can't talk it away that I don't have to tithe off of my tax return. Obviously, God keeps bringing it back to me, and it's because he wants to deal with something inside of me. Mm -hmm. So um, so I, I already knew part of it was a poverty mentality of fear, 
which will turn into greed, by the way. Uh, but anyways, um, so God spoke to me and he said, I have to deal with your poverty spirit because I want to give you more, but I can't until I deal with the spirit because if I do, it will destroy you. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, so like the message this morning, Roy never talks about tithing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this morning when I got ready for church, I felt like God said, I'm going to speak to you today concerning what you've been praying about. So mm -hmm. uh, obviously Roy's message is pretty timely. But anyways, God is loving even, you know, some people look at tithing like, well, I don't want to tithe because why do I need to tithe? Like the church doesn't need my money. I need my money or, you know, or I could do something else for God's kingdom with my money instead of tithing it to the church, you know, whatever. Um, but it's not even that God needs our money. It's that God wants us. That's it. And if we have, if we struggle with tithing, there's many different reasons we could struggle with it, but there's, there's a reason, and God mm -hmm. wants to deal with the reason out of his lovingness, though, not out of his ruthless, I'm going to punish you if you don't tithe kind of, because mm -hmm. I've went through seasons where I chose not to tithe on purpose because I realized I was tithing for the wrong reasons. I was tithing out of fear. Um, and so I actually went through a season years ago to, of not tithing just to kind of, I don't know, challenge God maybe. <laughs> And God didn't strike me down. Mm. Um, but he dealt with me in that season, too, about not tithing in fear. So now I don't tithe out of fear. But anyways, um, I just felt like I should share that one part of how he, he said that he wanted to deal because he wants to give us more, but he won't do it if it's going to destroy us because he loves yes. us too much. Exactly. Yes. Amen. Anybody else have a question or whatever? Don't get it too close. It'll be loud. Okay. Um, I'm t talking about now I'm a parent, so I'm trying to teach my teenage daughters about tithing and all. I really haven't talked to them about offering, so I probably need to do that better. But I have did something that Roy have talked about in the past, usually when he talk about tithing, is the saving. I'm trying to teach them that they need to put also 10% back for mm -hmm. saving mm -hmm. because it's all good principle. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. I hope this morning there is no condemnation to you. If there is, listen, since God is after your heart, he loves a cheerful giver. Okay? And my thing is, if you can't tithe in faith, ask God to give you faith to tithe. Okay? But remember, God doesn't need the money. For years, this church was not self-sustaining. But God always provided. Always. By all rights, we shouldn't even be here because um, the periods we went through. So I, I just want to encourage you, trust God. He is faithful. Amen? Let's see. And Father God, thank you for showing us the truth about the tithe and putting you first. God, uh, might we put you first in every area of our life that we might keep an eternal perspective and not get caught up with this earth and the things of this earth. Uh, God, speak to us and lead and guide us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.